Hello, I'm Commissioner of Agriculture, Steve Troxler, and I'm here at the A&T Research Farm here today standing at a high tunnel, and uh, we're doing a series of videos about what the department does and what the divisions do on a daily basis, and today we're going to talk about our small farm section and the very important work that they do in North Carolina. If you look at statistics, we have about 50,000 farms in North Carolina and about 90% of those are classified as small farms. Uh, this is a farm that grosses under $250,000 a year. Uh, I myself started as a small farmer and grew into a larger farming operation and we're here to help people be successful. That's what it's all about. Uh, it, you start looking at federal and state programs, you can get lost in the alphabet soup of the different programs that are out there, especially at the federal level. So we try to work with uh, limited resource farmers, minority farmers, small farms, and our veterans to help them get through this maze that they need to get through uh, on a daily basis. One of the statistics that was very disappointing years ago is the small farms and limited resource farms, minority farms, only use federal programs in about 3% of the cases. Uh, they are just as eligible as any farmer is to use these resources, so our main goal is to make sure that they understand the programs and they're able to navigate uh, what's out there to be able to use these resources. So I'm very proud of the work that the small farms team does in the department. We do have four full-time employees in this section and their goal is to help every small farmer, every limited resource farmer, uh, every minority farmer, and every veteran that's in agriculture. We have a big agricultural tent in North Carolina. There's room for everybody. There's room for everybody to be successful, and that's what we're out for. I have with me today Archie Hart, who is the director of the small farm section in the Department of Ag. Archie, thank you for everything that you and your team do every day to help people in North Carolina. Commissioner, thank you so much. Uh, Archie, I know one of the things that's going on right now is this is a resource guide for limited resource farmers, and we have just reprinted this, and it's going to be for distribution soon. Is that correct? Yes, sir. It should be out in the next couple of weeks, and uh, this is in the month of September. So by October, it should be fully loaded and ready to go. Good deal. Uh, I know during the time that we were putting out the uh, disaster fund to North Carolina, one of the things that I asked the small farms team to do was to make sure that all of our limited resource farmers, minority farmers, uh, veteran farmers, uh, whoever, uh, to be able to access that, uh, that disaster payment and make sure that they had that opportunity. How did that go? Uh, Commissioner, it went real well, and we thank you for your commitment, first and foremost. Uh, we did, uh, we, as you are committed, so we are committed. Uh, we use media, we use technology, and even in the midst of COVID, Commissioner, we uh, got in our cars when need be, put our mask on, and went out there because it was that important that we are inclusive in all that we do for the betterment of uh, all farmers, but especially small farmers in North Carolina. I thank you so much for doing that, and I do hope that every small farmer and limited resource farmer had access to those funds, but we tried. I know that. We did. Uh, I know you've got some guests here with you today. Would you like to bring them in and introduce them? Right. Yes, sir, Commissioner. I'd like to introduce uh, to those that are watching Martha Calderon, who is a small farmer uh, in Lincoln County uh, growing a cornucopia and variety of different vegetables. Martha, welcome. We sure, certainly are glad you could be here today. Uh, how has our small farms program impacted you and the small farms program at uh, A&T State University? Uh, well, first let me thank you, uh, Mr. Archie and Commissioner Director for inviting me. Um, I've always believed that knowledge is power and Mr. Archie and Mr. Sutton certainly know what they're doing and they've been instrumental in helping us I like if, if I call them and they don't know the information I need, they can connect me to the right person. They were able to give me, to help me when we got the um, value added producer grant that the letters uh, that, that we needed to, to complete the grant. Mr. Sutton connected me with um, 
uh, um, lady that knew about all kinds of weeds and why we were having so much problem at the farm and what we could do. So like I said, knowledge is power and they, they certainly have the they certainly have the, the knowledge and if they don't, they can, they can connect you to whatever it is, the information you need. How many acres of uh, product, product are you growing now? Uh, about a, over, a little over of a hundred between pep, five varieties of pepper, tomato, and pickles. That is wonderful. And I guess you started much smaller than what you are today. You've had to grow your way into it? Yes. When, when we first met Mr. Archie and Mr. Sutton, we probably were about 40 acres. And since then, um, after the value added producer grant that they help us um, consolidate or, or get, um, uh, we've grown to over 100, 100 acres. And we know that we can always, if we have any doubt or we have any need for information, I can always count on them to, like I said, if they don't know, they don't have the information I need, they can direct me towards where I get the information. Because they, they have connected me to several people. They have gone to my farm for weeds, for, for um, other different needs that my farm has had. Well, I want to thank you for being part of this $92.7 billion uh, agricultural uh, operation that we have in North Carolina, and I wish you much success. Thank you so much for inviting me, and it's good to be able to give a little bit back of everything that has been given to us. Thank you so much. Archie, if you would, introduce our next guest. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, this is uh, Vern Spicer. He's a farmer over in uh, Forsyth County. He's kind of like a Marine. He's one of the few, the proud minority farmers over in Forsyth County. <laughs> we certainly welcomed you here today, and I wanted to tell you that uh, he showed me something. He walked up and said, uh, do you know what this is? And I looked at it, and I said, well, no, I actually don't. But this is sassafras. And I know that people have heard about sassafras tea and different things. And I think you told me the first cola was actually made out of sassafras. But I've never seen it, but he says it grows in the wild. It's called sassafras. Sass sass sassafras. Yep. And you have with you some amazing plants that you grow on your farm. What do you got here? This is Moringa. This is an amazing herb. And it's been known for years and years and years. It will just Google it, moringa. And moringa is good for just about everything in your body. Sugar diabetes, it won't kill you, but it will help you. It's good for cancer. It's good for everything. And it gives you energy like you would not believe. I've been on it for the last 14 years, taking it every single day. And I tell you, it's just amazing what it does. Not only physical, but also mental. And it'll help you see better. <laughs> now the middle part of it, I need a great big bushel basket of that if I, if I could get one. Uh, you were telling me that uh, you, this grows in Africa. And how did you get started growing? It grows in Africa and India and a lot of other parts of the world. But I got started through uh, uh, studying with a t University. ANT University grows this also. And uh, that's how I got started. And uh, I tell you, it's just amazing the way it grows. You plant it, and it grows. Once it gets this high in the ground, every two weeks it grows anywhere from two to three feet. Every two weeks. And you can harvest every two weeks about this much. I just harvested this year back two or three weeks ago. And that, I cut that much off uh, yesterday. Are you growing this on a high tone? Yes, sir. So that gives you the advantage of being able to grow it a much longer time than you could outside. Yes, sir, and much faster. Yeah, that's great. Have Archie and my team been able to help you in this? Number one. <laughs> Number one. Uh, they helped me to get my high tone uh, years back, and I was able to get my high tone built. And then that I got a high tone, I can extend my season not only from uh, from uh, April to uh, uh, from uh, probably December to April, but I can get it to go from uh, say uh, August all the way over into probably December before I have to worry about putting heat in. You were telling me that uh, you hadn't been using the upper part of the high tunnel, but you've got plans to do that? Absolutely, absolutely. Because whatever grows down, it can grow up. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And sometimes upside down. <laughs> Well, I don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, I certainly do appreciate you being here today, and I wish you uh, all the luck in the world, but we know farming ain't luck. Farming's hard work. Yes, indeed. I see the most important thing about what Archie and the Small Farmers Program has done for me, it has helped me spiritually, physically, and financially. And I say physically because it made me stronger. Financially because it made me look like what I am, a millionaire. <laughs> And I had a student ask me one time, say, you a millionaire? I said, well, let me put it this way. I'm working on my second million. I missed the first one. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, we, we certainly do appreciate you being here today. And Archie, sounds like to me you've been handing out some $20 bills or something the way he's been bragging on you. <laughs> but I, I know it's true, so I thank you for the work thank that you. You, you and your team do every day. Thank you, please. Join me again next week for another video on the things that the Department of Agriculture does.